Another tutorial video. Aren't you lucky? This one is on vapor pressure. Vapor pressure is an interesting concept. It bleeds into things that I think are pretty interesting, but in itself it might be a little confusing. So let's start off with what happens. So on the left, we start off with the liquid. We kind of pretend like there's nothing above the liquid. There's no air. There's no gas. It's evacuated. And then you seal it off. And what happens is the liquid will start to evaporate. Uh, and move into a gas state, filling the top. Uh, at some point, the particles which are moving in rapid motion and random motion will bounce around and end up going kerplunk back into the liquid. So initially, the gas is being formed uh, only, and then the gas is being formed faster than the liquid is being formed. But then on the right side, we have this thing called equilibrium in which the rate at which the gas is being formed is equal to the rate in which the liquid is being formed. So if you add or create 10,000 gas particles in the same period of time that you use up 10,000 gas particles to go to a liquid state, then in that period of time, there's no overall change. We do talk about this in terms of dynamic equilibrium because it is going on. You are using you do have, again, making up a number, 10,000 liquid particles moving to a gas phase, but at the same time, 10,000 other gas particles moving to a liquid phase, which means the amount of gas above the liquid is constant. If we stuck a probe on here and measure the pressure, now this is going to be the gas, the gas that is the liquid. In other words, if this is ethanol, then the gas is ethanol. So the gas above its, like possessive, its liquid, uh, when it's at equilibrium, is going to be defined as vapor pressure. The crazy part is vapor pressure is actually going to be a physical property, right? Physical property of the liquid. It is a measure, um, and it could be relative or quantitative, is a measure of how much the liquid wants to go into a gas state. So if you put water on your hands, it feels wet. Yeah, not a big shocker. If you put alcohol on your hands, it feels cool and it evaporates pretty quickly. That has a higher vapor pressure than water. If you put acetone on your hands, it evaporates really fast and feels really cool. It's not very, the particles are not very sticky to each other in terms of IMFs, and therefore it tends to go into gas state really quickly, which means its vapor pressure would be higher. Here's another example of like going from just the liquid to going to the gas to reaching equilibrium. So on the left side, we have this kind of sealed container, right? Sealed. There's nothing above it initially, and therefore the liquid will go into a gas state. Uh, and as it, the particles move more and more into the gas state, gas pressure is building up. So here it says that the vapor vaporization rate is faster than the condensation rate. It hasn't reached equilibrium, so more gas particles are being formed, more liquid particles are moving to a gas state. Then the random gas particle going, you know, kerplunk back into the liquid. So if you have, if you've been in physics at all and you have these vectors, if you have a rate going into a gas state and a rate going into a liquid state and the size of the arrow represents, you know, magnitude, then overall you have an arrow coming up. So the rate overall is faster going to a gas state. But at some point, it fills with so many particles that the rate of the gas going to a liquid is equal to the liquid going to a gas. This is the equilibrium. And the pressure at this point, this is the constant pressure, would be vapor pressure. Vapor pressure, again, is a measure of the pressure of the gas above its liquid in a sealed container at equilibrium. So if you look at this and the pressure is, I don't know, let's say 50 torr. 
Well, if you come back tomorrow and you seal up the same liquid at the same temperature, that's the key, then it would be 50 torr again for this for the vapor pressure because it's a constant. You can just look them up. You look them up. Yes. So if we have a room that is like 23 degrees Celsius, we can look up the water vapor pressure uh, as 21.0. Well, it's a lot of digits. 07 tor, 068, sure, whatever. Um, and as the temperature goes up, you see that the vapor pressure goes up, right? And then as it gets up really high, which is 28 degrees is not really high, it keeps going up. So vapor pressure is affected by temperature. The higher temperature, the higher the vapor pressure. If you graph those temperatures uh, and vapor pressures, each one's an X and a Y coordinate, if you graph them, you would see this, that it is uh, temperature and vapor pressure of water is going to be um, a, not a one-to-one, -one, but it's going to be a direct relationship, and it's going to be an exponential at that. So the higher the temperature, the even higher the pressure, if that's a way to say it. So it's going to be an exponential type of a thing. If we look at the same kind of graphing of water and methanol, then we can see um, a pattern here. They're both exponential, but methanol is not as sticky to itself. It has a higher vapor pressure at any given temperature. So here's 20 degrees right here, and here's 20 degrees. And so for water, it's barely above zero. For uh, methanol, it's like that 10. And then if you go on down the line to like 40, 40 degrees is pretty darn warm. So it'll be over here. It looks like around seven or so. But for methanol, it's going to be like 37, 38, something like that. And if you keep going up, you will find something that this is standard pressure. And what happens to water? under standard pressure at 100 degrees Celsius. And that is it boils. So boiling point, right, boiling point, you can do BPT. Boiling point is when the vapor pressure of the liquid, it's a physical property of the liquid, meets or exceeds the outside pressure. Now is temperature, is temperature related, but the Definition of boiling point doesn't necessarily have temperature in it. It's when the two vapor pressures equal. Well, methanol can reach 101.3 kilopascals uh, at a lower temperature than water can, and therefore it boils at a lower temperature. If we increase the outside pressure, which means these guys would have to keep going up if to meet the outside pressure, then the boiling points would increase. So if we had a pressure cooker, because the outside pressure is higher, right? The outside pressure is higher. The vapor pressure would have to get higher to meet that. And therefore the temperature at which this happens will be even higher and boiling points would increase. If we were on top of a mountain in which the pressure was lower because you're way above sea level, then the outside pressure would be lower and therefore for the vapor pressure of the liquid to meet that lower outside pressure, it would require less energy. And now the boiling point of the water looks like it's only going to be around 94 or so, 95. And the boiling point of methanol went from uh, high 60s to right at 60. So outside pressure affects boiling point. Water, water boils at all sorts of different temperatures. So how do these vapor pressures affect our, you know, questions in chemistry and whatnot? Well, when we, we do a lot of collecting gas over water. So we typically have this eudiometer tube. And here we have a metal, uh, and metal is reacting with hydrochloric acid, um, the metal zinc, 
You're going to form, it's going to have hydrochloric acid. You're going to form the zinc chloride, which is going to be aqueous in water and just floating around, and hydrogen gas. So we form this gas and we collect this gas um, by filling this container with water. As the gas is formed, the water drops down and you have gas above it. However, because it is water and because uh, water tends to evaporate, then some of the gas particles in this space, right, the space of gas, some of the gas particles are water vapor. We can easily look up what the water vapor pressure is because it's a constant at whatever temperature the lab is in. So you just look at the lab, oh, it's 22 degrees. Go look at that chart I showed you a minute ago and you know the pressure. So what it is is when we do things like PIVNERT, right, we got pressure, volume, moles, temperature, and R. Well, R is a constant, it doesn't change. Temperature is of the gas. And the temperature of the water vapor and the temperature of the hydrogen is the same. So that doesn't make any difference. It's in the same area. It's going to be the same. The volume, well, the volume of the two gases, they're in the same container. So that's the same. However, the moles and the pressure has to be the same. If we are talking about the moles of the hydrogen gas, which is what we typically talk about, then we have to have the pressure of the hydrogen gas. If you remember Dalton's law of partial pressures, if this is the gas, then these particles are making the pressure. Some of the particles are water, right? And some of them are hydrogen. So I would call this, like if we knew the pressure inside, which is equal to pressure outside, we would say this pressure would be total pressure. That's going to equal to the atmospheric pressure that we can look up. But that will be equal to the two gases, one of which is water vapor, which we can look up. And the other one is the pressure of the gas here, in this case, hydrogen. So if I wanted to do the math on the right, then, and I wanted to calculate moles of hydrogen gas. I would need volume in liters, but that's going to be the same because they take up the same space. I need temperature in Kelvin, but that's the same because they're mixed. They're going to have the same temperature. R is a constant. That's not a problem. But if I wanted to figure out moles of hydrogen gas, I need pressure of hydrogen gas. Looking at this equation right here, how do you figure out pressure of hydrogen gas? You get the total pressure. You subtract out the vapor pressure that you look up, and that will equal to the hydrogen gas pressure. For us, it'll be a correction factor in a lab, and it'll allow us to get a closer to correct answer. It's pretty short and sweet, so I know you'll probably have questions. Um, there are no vapor pressures you have to memorize. So for tests and for quizzes and stuff, they'll be given to you. For homework, you might have to look them up, but typically not. I will also say that uh, they're typically going to be measured in tor or millimeters of mercury, same thing. But the pressure of the outside pressure is typically going to be in ATMs or it's going to be in KPA. So you have to convert one pressure to the other. You cannot subtract KPA minus tor to equal something else. They have to be the same thing. And typically, we like KPA. So you got to be able to convert TOR into KPA. Um, and that would be simple. You have TOR, and then we're going to have 760 TOR equals to 101.3 kilopascals. And that would convert whatever number you, you are given into KPA. And now you can subtract it. And now I'm done. I hope you enjoyed it.